Now there, this is Quantum Phenomena. This is lesson one. Let's have a look then. Recap question. If you want to pause and have a go, then I'll take you through the answer. Calculate the energy of a photon of ultraviolet light. So we've got the frequency and the Planck constant. You're going to need this for subsequent questions. So either make sure you know it or write it down if you can't remember it. So this would be E equals HF to get the energy. So 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 multiplied by the frequency, which is 9 times 10 to the 14. So that gives an energy of 5.97 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Straightforward. Let's do another recap question. So on this one, we're going to calculate the energy of a photon of light of wavelength 450 nanometers. So I'll pause and have a go. Then I'll take you through it. So straightforward. We've got the wavelength. Energy is equal to HC over the wavelength. So Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34, multiplied by the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, divided by the wavelength, 450 nanometers, so times 10 to the minus 9 meters. So that gives an energy of 4.42 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Well, let's move on to the next bit. The photoelectric effect. So what I'm going to do is discuss this in a, in a broad manner, and then I've got some notes here to take. So essentially the photoelectric effect is where we shine light, or photons, photons, onto a metal surface and eject the surface electrons from the from the surface of the metal. So the way it works, or the way that we thought it would work, classically, is, so this is the metal. Let's say, I'm going to use round numbers, simple numbers, but these numbers are very, very large, and you know they would not be indicative of real life. So let's say there was a, an electron at this point, and it needed three joules of energy to liberate it from the surface. So say we fired a, a photon in, or some light, a light wave, and it had two joules of energy. Not enough, you know, it needs to be three. So let's fire another one. So let's have two rays of light at two joules each. So now, you know, simple addition, you'd say, that, well, the four joules is enough, they would add together and we could liberate the electron. However, that's not the case. That is not what happened. It doesn't work. In fact, we could fire a billion of these photons at this surface and liberate absolutely nothing. It doesn't add together as we thought it did, classically. So what we found out is that if, if it needed these three joules of energy, and it had three joules, then it would be liberated. Then we found out that if, say if we gave it four joules, and we needed three joules to liberate, then it would be ejected and it would have some extra energy. And as you probably guessed, the extra energy would be one joule. And it would obviously be kinetic energy. It would, you know, the more kinetic energy it's got, the faster it will, it will leave the surface. So to explain why the multiple waves wouldn't add together to liberate the electron, we had to come to a new way of thinking. And this experiment was done by Einstein. And what I'm going to do now is, is move to the next few slides and allow you to take some notes to explain this. So let's fix, first of all, the observations. So there was a threshold frequency. Remember to pause at any point if you need to. The photograph, uh, photoelectric effect only occurs if the frequency 
of the electromagnetic radiation is above a certain threshold value. The reason being that free, it's frequency dependent is the energy of a photon is HF. So the different energies that I talked about a moment ago are obviously related to frequency. Variation of threshold frequency. So what we know is that the threshold frequency varied with different materials. So different metals needed different amounts of energies to liberate the electrons from the surface. Effect of radiation intensity. Now the radiation intensity is the amount of light. So if you increase intensity, it will get brighter because there is more light. It's important to, to understand that. So the greater the intensity, the greater the number of electrons that are emitted, but only if the radiation was above the threshold frequency. So in our previous example, when we use the three joule uh, photon or light, the electron is liberated. If we then increased the, the amount of light in that respect, at that value, then we will just get more electrons. Time of emission. So electrons are emitted as soon as the material is exposed. There's, there's no lag, essentially. Maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons. Depends only on the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation and the material exposed, not on its intensity or the amount. That'll become more clear when we look at the equation. So let's move on, let's get some more notes. Remember to pause at any time. So problems with the wave theory. So it was the general uh, idea that EM, electromagnetic radiation, behaved like classical waves. But wave theory could not explain the photoelectric effect. It's just wrong. You know, in particular, wave theory predicted that there would not be any threshold frequency or frequencies of radiation would eventually cause electron emission by adding their energy together over time, which is the principle that I discussed at first. And that increase in the intensity, which is the amount of, uh, of light, would increase the rate of emission at all frequencies, not just those above a certain minimum frequency, which is obviously wrong as well. And it also thought that emission would not take place immediately upon exposure, and the weaker radiations would take longer to produce electrons as their energies would need time you know, to sum or to add up. So they were the problems. None, none of this occurred. So Einstein, he had an explanation. He said that EM radiation consists of packets or quanta of energy, and he called them photons. And the energy of these photons depends on the frequency of the radiation only. E equals HF. which is proportional to the frequency. Photons interact one-on-one -on -one with electrons in the material. So if the photon energy was above a certain minimum amount, depending on the material, then electrons would indeed be emitted. And the excess energy is available for the kinetic energy of the emitted electrons. Right then, photoelectric equation. So we have HF equals phi, which is just the Greek letter, plus EK max. So H is Planck's constant, F is the frequency, phi is the work function, uh, EK max is the kinetic energy. So a bit more information. HF would is the energy of the photon, equals HF, remember. Phi, the work function, is the work function of the exposed material. And there's a key word that we have to say. We have to say it's the minimum amount of energy. It's the, the work function is the minimum, minimum amount of energy required to liberate an electron from the surface of the metal. You've got to use the key word minimum. There you go. And... Kinetic energy is the, the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons. The minimum and maximum are very important. If it asks for an explanation of this equation in, in any exam, I would go with minimum and maximum, definitely. And the work function, so the definition, the minimum energy required for an electron to escape 
from the surface of a material. So we need to know that definition as well. You can be asked that. Let's move on. Threshold frequency. So we've got the equation. HF equals work function plus kinetic energy. So the energy of the photon is equal to the work function plus kinetic energy of the liberated electron. If the incoming photons are of the threshold frequency, the electrons will have minimum energy required for emission. They'll have zero. So the equation would become HF equals the work function, or the energy of the photon is equal to the work function. To get the threshold frequency, we just need to divide by Planck's constant. So the threshold frequency is the work function divided by Planck's constant. You can be asked this. This is very common in examinations. So let's do a couple of questions. So first one, calculate the threshold frequency of a metal if the metal's work function is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Let's have a go at that. Just pause. So definition. So equation. Energy of photon is equal to work function plus maximum kinetic energy of the liberated electron. So at the threshold frequency, the kinetic energy would equal zero. So we'd have Planck's constant times the threshold frequency equals the work function. And then just rearrange to get the threshold frequency. So work function, 1.2 times 10 to the minus 19 divided by Planck's constant. 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. So we get 1.81 times 10 to the 14 hertz. So I'll look at the next one. Hopefully that went okay. I'm going to attempt this. So HF equals work function plus the kinetic energy. So we're going to calculate the maximum kinetic energy. So we've got H and we've got the work function. So work function's there, frequency's there. So let's just put some numbers in. So Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 times the frequency. 3.2 times 10 to the 14 equals the work function, which is 1.4 times 10 to the minus 19 joules plus the kinetic energy. So to get the kinetic energy, we just need to do the energy of the photon and subtract the work function. And when we do that, we're left with the kinetic energy. equal to 7.216 times 10 to the minus 20 joules. So that should be pretty straightforward. Let's move on. So on this question, we've got a photon which has wavelength 200 nanometers. If the maximum kinetic energy of an emitted electron is one, point, is one times 10 to the minus 19 joules, Calculate the work function, and then we'll calculate the threshold frequency. So if you want to have a go at that, please do. And then I'll take you through it. So this time we've got the photon energy equals the work function plus the kinetic energy. And the photon energy can be given by HC over lambda is equal to the work function plus the kinetic energy. So we need to do the energy of the photon, subtract the kinetic energy. So the energy of the photon would be 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34, multiplied by the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, divided by the wavelength, 200 nanometers. So 200 times 10 to the minus 9. Then we need to subtract the kinetic energy, 1 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And that will give us the work function. And the work function is... 8.945, 8.945 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And the second part of the question wants the threshold frequency. So we can do that now. Just going to make some room. Threshold 
threshold frequency is when there's zero kinetic energy. So H threshold frequency equals work function. So the threshold frequency is simply the work function divided by Planck's constant. So let's put some numbers in. So the work function is 8.945 times 10 to the minus 19 divided by Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34, which gives us a threshold frequency of 1.3 times 10 to the 15 hertz. Hopefully that lesson went okay, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.